Hey folks, today I am supposed to make a paper computer game, a one-page paper computer game for the PCG Roundabout, so I'm going to be making it here. Join me while I make it. Let's make a paper computer game. Alright, let me just get some quick background music going over here. Hold on, let me open, yeah. Just some inspirationally kind of music. Let's switch to our other view and uh, let us, uh, let me see if I can actually watch it on here. Um, yeah, so we can see, oh, hey, JPGS is already in here. Welcome, JPGS. Um, so yeah. The requirements in a PCG roundabout is that when you are making the PCG, you have to take only 10 minutes to make it. So, um, let me, uh, uh hold on. Yeah, let me, uh, like, I have, a, I have a countdown timer over here. So I'm going to start it, and when I start it, that will be when I start making the game. I hope I have a pencil here. Do I have a pencil anywhere? I really should have figured this out before I started the stream. Um, I know there's a pencil around here somewhere. Here we go. This will have to do. Um. Picture in picture mode. Oh man. Uh, JPGS says, what game are you making? I'm making, um, well, I haven't decided yet, but it's going to be the next game in the PCG Roundabout, which is taking place right now on Discord. I last played a game, so, um, I feel like the music is a bit too loud. Um, I played the last game in the PCG Discord, which means it is now my turn to make a game. Um, let's see, what is this doing over here? Yeah, um... So it is my turn to make it, and as such, I have to make a game that is going to be one page long, and it is going to uh, use one character, or at least one character, from the previous person's PCG. So I guess it's time to, to start, so let us start that timer. And we've got a good old 10 minute countdown timer. Let's start drawing. And Starry says, what's happening boys? We are making a paper computer game, a one page paper computer game for the PCG roundabout. So, uh, let us see. Um, okay, so first and foremost, this is gonna take place like, like 50 to 100 years after the previous game in the PCG roundabout. So you play, this is gonna be the, the, the first game in this entire roundabout that does not follow either Inspector Zack or Zack Jr. This will not star any member of the Zack family. In fact, this is as anti-Zack family, not this Zack, it's very pro-Zack, but, but, but anti-like Inspector Zack from the previous PCGs. Um, so, let's see. So first and foremost, let's make our main character. So he's going to have sort of like, oh, my art is terrible, I can't draw, I can't draw. Ah, ah, what is going on? I don't even know right now. Okay, so, um, give him a little bit, a bit of a railing there. He's kind of standing. Legs and, and arms, you know, like most normal human being. JPGS says, "Are you gonna play with Zuvac? Cause that would be cool. Uh, that would be cool, but oh yeah, dude, I do have Zuvac. Now that you mention it, I do have Zuvac. Um, but I'll probably do that next time. This one, I have to play it with the next person in the PCG roundabout. Um, so I guess I'll save it for them to play it." 
Um, but I'll do that next time because that's a really good idea, JPGS. Next time I'm doing one of these making a PCG streams. All right, so this guy's got this railing is going to kind of go around him. And it is attached to a platform. Hey, how's it going, Yak Games? Um, what? I never know. Like, cause your name on YouTube is Daniel. I never know if I should call you Yak Games or Daniel the Yak or or, or what. Um, I guess it's like the common theme of both of your names is Yak. So that's that's what I've been going with. But but it's counterintuitive because I see your like. <laughs> you can call me whatever. Awesome. Thanks, dude. Um, yeah. Okay, so, um... It's my PCG brand? Yes. Yes, definitely it is. Alright, so, Yak Games it is. Um... Let's see. My perspective is terrible, as well as every other aspect of my art, but that's okay. Making these railings, and this guy is gonna have like a head, which is a thing that most people have, I think. You know, safe to say. Um, how many people are in chat? Why can't why can't I like see on this thing? Oh, I can. I can. Sweet. Um, let me make this a little bit smaller so I can. So I can see. Alright. This guy, he has like a control sphere. I just decided that, like, just a second. He's got like a little control sphere over here, in it, which is attached to the, to the ground of this thing, which is what controls this craft. That's right. That's right. This we're going science fiction over here. Five, five. What? Oh, five minutes. Oh gosh, I am running out of time. I'm spending way too much time on this one little aspect. Of the game okay so what am I gonna do for the rest of this page okay asteroid asteroid is a little bit further off asteroid Can you go over the time a little since you're reading comments and stuff? I don't know. That's, that's, uh, well, technically that's up to Yak Games. Oh, you're, oh, I didn't realize that was you saying that. <laughs> Man, I was like, gonna say, like, you should ask Yak Games if you can. Yeah, um, so thank you. Um, but I will, uh, try not to anyway. I can get this done on time. 
I think, safe to say. Not a problem. This has got two, like, spikes coming out of it. It's got, like, spikes on the top. And one large spire. 228. Can I finish it? Can I finish it on time? I know I don't have to anymore because I got permission from Yak Games, but I'm still going to try. This has an emplacement. This has an emplacement. And this has a little emplacement. And over here, there is just a little bit of debris. Just a little. Now, the goal of this game is to get to this here space station. To get aboard it because um, aboard this space station is is a very important person that person is inspector Zach the third We are we we are by the way in orbit over over a planet over here. You can decide what planet that is. Could be Earth. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to decide when I play it at least. But point being, it is a planet that we are over. There's like continents or whatever going on down here. 30 seconds to go, and I am. Done. Wait, wait. 22 seconds. I can shade in outer space. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 17 seconds to go. Gotta make this border darker. Duh. Okay. Jeez, we're really going through the Zach generations. And we are done. Pencils down. All right, you guys. Here it is. Um, yes, all right, I gotcha. Stop, stop, oh, okay, okay. So, this game um, is going to, this takes place uh, probably through a, like a hundred years after the, well, probably not a hundred, I'm gonna say 50 years after the previous game in the PCG roundabout. You do not play as Zack. Zack is aboard the space station, and you are trying to get to him because you are that guy that I shot uh, in, 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 in the last installment. The guy that I shot and didn't kill. Um, because he is, because that guy, <laughs> dang, how old is Zack at this point? I don't know. Oh, see, because here's the thing. This isn't Zach you're trying to get to. This is Zach the third. I don't know if... Yeah, I haven't decided if Zach himself is still alive, but he'd probably be pretty old. Um, I guess that, that'll... Um, we'll either decide that during the game or that'll be for the next person to decide, but definitely Zach the third is aboard this space station, and we are trying to rescue him because... Because... Like, we showed this guy mercy because, like, I saved game. Like, I had originally killed this guy. Then, um, uh, Yak, you, 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 you're like, man, you really want to kill. So then, so then I felt all bad and saved game and didn't kill him. So because I didn't kill him, I showed him mercy and whatever. Now, like, he had a change of heart and he has turned around and now, like, he wants to save Zach the Third. 
from where he is being held captive on this massive space station. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, that is my PCG. Um, and the next thing to do, I think, is to post it in the, uh, the uh, Discord. Nice character development. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, um, I guess to do that... I'll have to get off. Wait, no, no. You know what? I can I can just use my iPad actually now that the timer is over. I'll take a picture of this. We're we're, we're gonna post this live. You guys are gonna watch me. You gotta play with cold brooding werewolf. All right, all right. I will I will. We're, I will try and do that with cold brooding werewolf. Okay, let me get an angle where there's no light. Um, let's see. Dang it. Oh, I know. I'll use this light. Okay. Photo taken. What do you guys think? Does that look okay? JPGS says I'll play it. Yeah, but like, the rule is it has to be played by the next person in the roundabout. Otherwise, I'd be happy to. But, um, like, JPGS, are you part of the roundabout? Because if not, you should definitely join it. It's in the PCG wiki. Um, let's see. I am going to edit this. Let's crop it a little bit so that it looks a little bit nicer. Whoops. There we go. Okay, saved. Now let's go into um Looks fine. JPGS says, I see Battlegrounds, my PXG game. You do? Wait, where do you, where do you see it? <laughs> like, was it in my iPad? I don't think so. Uh, I guess it could be. Oh, wait, wait. Where do you see it? I have Battlegrounds in here somewhere. Oh! Oh, I know where you see it. It's right here. Yeah, yeah, totally. I did, I did, uh, I did a video with this, so I have it all printed out. So yeah, good old Battlegrounds by JPGS, or I guess by PXG, because that's his other channel, is PXG, which you guys should check out. Even though he hasn't done a whole lot of PCG stuff on it lately. Um, on the side of the desk, yes. Okay, so let's go into Discord. Discord. Where is the roundabout? Man, there's too many game rooms. Here we go. Game room roundabout. Um, whenever he makes it. All right, you guys. It is ready. It would be cool if some PCG roundabout games were in the PCG shop. Yeah, JPGS. Um, like, at the end of the roundabout, uh, Yak says he's going to gather up all the games and put them together into, like, one big package and put that on the PCG shop. So the whole thing will be available on the PCG shop. Um... Photo. All right. Should be uploading.
going to add Cold Brooding Werewolf. And we are good. So the mission of this live stream has been completed. I have successfully created a PCG, as you guys can see, in 10 minutes or less. And uh, I'm ready to play it. So, yeah. Um, I guess uh, that's all I had to do for this live stream. But, like, if you guys have any more uh, questions real or any comments or things that I should look at or whatever, I'm, I'm happy to do that real fast. Otherwise, I can um, end the stream any old time. Nobody's saying anything. Okay, um, I guess in that case, I will uh, end. Wait, Daniel uh, Dan uh, Yak says, what is tutorial bot made of? Hmm. Trick question there, because you would think it's metal, because he's tutorial bot, right? But little known fact is that when tutorial bot was created, he was actually created by putting like a super high tech device inside of a cardboard box. So all this time, even though he like looks like metal and everything, he was like souped up by the device that was put inside of him. Which I guess really is him. He's he's basically a thing inside a cardboard box, I guess. But regardless, technically, technically he's made of cardboard. <laughs> Unless like the device itself is probably made of like some metal kind of stuff. But like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's confusing. He looks like metal, but he was originally made out of a cardboard box. So yeah, Auto Origin. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of Kurt's stuff has odd origins. You have no idea. <laughs> like, that—that that is the tip of the iceberg of weird origins. Um, like, yeah, you're, you're, like, and we find that out after working with Tutorial Bot for, like, two whole PCGs. So, I'm like, it's like, oh, he is actually a cardboard box <laughs> this whole time. I did not know. Meanwhile, he's been metal the whole time, you know, or, or like effectively metal, like looks like metal, acts like metal. So I don't know, maybe the device inside of him like changed the molecular structure of the cardboard. I don't know. I don't know. That's weird. It's a weird thing. Um, yeah, like, and the collector, his origin is is even weirder than that. You don't even, uh, what about Zuvac? Zuvac is pretty normal because Zuvac was created by Chris. So, um, I mean, besides being a clown on a stick, I mean, I guess that's pretty weird. But like, Zuvac is just a regular uh, robot. He's a he, he's a he's a robot clown on a stick. He was created by the company. Um, just wanted to know because I'll color them in the future. Well, Tutorial Bot, like I said, he looks like metal, so you can color him just like you know silver or gray like metal. And Zuvac, you know, of course. Looks like this. So, um, yeah, that like he's got like this part of Zuvac is like metal. This part, like the head is white and the hair. We, these are actually connectome hairs, according to, to the prequel Zuvac, The Life and Times of a Clown on a Stick. Those are connectome hairs, which is actually what allows him to connect to the internet. Um, that print is so sick. I know, I know. It's it's amazing. Um, I love it. I'm very happy I got it. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is what this is what uh, Zuvac looks like uh, in terms of color. Um, and tutorial bot is just obviously silver with, or or you know metal color. Um, I'm making a PCG animation just for fun. That's awesome. I, I can't wait to see it um, and, and you know, do all sorts of stuff with it. Let me know when it's, when it's done. I'm, I'm super looking forward to it. GPGS says Swiss hairs like antennas. Yeah, yeah. They're, um, yeah, they're basically antennas. They, they, they let him connect to any technology that's nearby um like in in, in uh, my pcg uh zuvac the life and times of a clown on a stick they let him like take over any technology in the immediate area like 
uh, and, and connect to the internet, obviously. Um, Daniel says, might show to you later. Awesome. Um, yeah, that that would be super cool. Please do. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, like for example, like in, in the first scene, um, there's like a security camera and Zuvac takes control. Oh, uh, JPGS. JPGS says if Zuvac existed, no need for Wi-Fi. I got him his Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> He 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 could he'd probably do that. He like he could probably hack into any nearby technology, connect to the internet through it, and then act as a Wi-Fi port. Yeah, I, I like no one ever did that in a PCG, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. <laughs> um, it's a weird remembering when I first found your channel. Yeah, how did you first find my channel? I like people like people just kind of appear, and I never know where they came from or how they discovered me or. Or the channel or anything so yeah what, what's your story now i'm part of the community yeah totally totally um yeah i found your channel from searching paper games ah makes sense makes sense yeah like i think there's like so many people who you know like the like you know people say like it's like I've seen it said a lot like oh the paper game community is dead you know like the p paper games are dying and all that sort of stuff but they've been saying that for so many years now and it always seems to be just constantly like dying but there's always more people who still make them so I don't know how that works but it, like it's always dying but it just never seems to die so um, yeah, like, even though, like, I, like, I sort of came out of a separate paper gaming tradition, you know, I thought, hey, you know, like, there's clearly a lot of enthusiasm for, for paper games here, like, maybe this is a good thing to jump into, you know, maybe I can, like, you know, bring peop these people together and into a community. Um, JPGS says, I first found your channel was when I was watching Paper Games by IPGS. Oh, wow. Dan, uh, Yak says, I didn't know about PCGs before. PCGs are basically paper games, but better. <laughs> um, I like. I feel like I shouldn't uh, comment on that one. <laughs> um, I'm obviously biased. Um, Yak says, the PGC is really weird like that. JPG says, to me, it wasn't the same since IPGS left. Yeah, like, I mean, I came in after he left, but, you know, when I, when I discovered the Paper Games community, it was sad, you know, like, seeing that all these people had been inspired by him, and, like, I, I watched his last video, like, where he was really sad, talking about, you know, like, how he's letting all these people down, who he had inspired. It, 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 was, it was really... Yeah, it, it's really sad. And, like, you know, he said... Um, it's not because I grew up, you know, people of any age can play these games, and I totally agree with that. Um, but, yeah, you know, it, it's always sad when there's, like, an end of the era like that. I know a lot of people for a long time wanted him to come back, but, I mean, you know, the good thing, JPGS, is that there's awesome people to carry on his legacy, and, you know, really that's, you know, I guess all you can hope for, you know, is that what he created and what he built you know, won't be forgotten, and it'll it'll continue to be built upon by newer and newer creators who will inspire more people, just like he did. Um, anyway, let's see. Um, Yak says, "I always found it weird that PGC is paper game community and PCG is paper computer games." I know, I know. What a coincidence, right? PGC, PCG. When I first discovered the paper games community, I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> like, how'd that happen? And, you know, the funny thing is, like, before, like, way before that, you know, way before PCGs were on YouTube, before even paper games were on YouTube, we, like, you know, we were talking about, you know, like, man, you know, I wonder if someday we'll find another community of people making paper computer games somewhere out there, and we don't know anything about it, totally different, they just came about by, co by total coincidence, um... And, like, we fantasized about discovering a community like that. And then finally, like, here it is, right? <laughs> the paper games, I mean, it's not exactly PCGs, but 
definitely like a kindred spirit community you know what i mean so yeah and, and like like the the letters are so similar like like wow <laughs> like what are the odds right um anyway well, let's see oddly similar yeah ipgs was a huge inspiration yeah and everyone kind of stopped making vids for a time jpgs says 2014 was the peak yeah see that's the thing 2014 people have been saying it's dying since 2014 i mean i mean that's not without truth i mean like the bigger people who make them like ipgs keiko kt you know and all of those have stopped but like that but like it's still going somehow like like i mean it's not as unified anymore maybe um so i mean like eventually i want to try and like you know bring it back together if i can but um yeah like it never stopped you know it, it's always like about to die it just never quite dies you know like what like, like a flame that just never quite goes out like like it, it, it like embers you know but it never quite stops same thing with paper computer games too when, now that i think about it i mean like how many times did me and my friends stop making them and they just kind of always come back into my head i always come back to them and now i have this channel after all the times paper computer games died all like over so many years like there's something about these games that you know is oh so good um anyway let's see Yak says, it makes me so happy knowing that there are other people with my interests. I know, seriously, me too, me too. Uh, like, it, it is so awesome that, you know, um, and it's so weird that PCGs and paper games are both created by different people, but sort of the same concept. The PC, the PGC has always been a mess, way less organized than the PCG community. Um, way less organized. Yeah, but, I mean, that's just because no one was ever really trying to organ well i feel like keiko kt was a little bit she was a little bit but i mean like i kind of built on that you know like i like i learned both from my own experiences with pcgs and i actually you know i have a video about like in my video about keiko kt i talk about this that like you know the way she was with the community like i mean uh, the, from what I've saw, seen, you know, commenting on people's videos and, you know, encouraging other people's creativity and, you know, stuff like that. You know, I thought that was a really, it creates a really good environment, a really fun gaming community to be in. And I wanted to, you know, kind of build on that idea. I wanted to find ways to, to take that idea, but go further with it. And like, I feel like that's working a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, like it's the PCG community is probably like a little bit more organized, but it, like that does owe a debt of gratitude to those people in the past because, you know, I learned from that, you know, and we all did. Like, you know, not all this stuff came from me. Like the the PCG Discord wasn't created by me, you know, like it, it just it was created by one of you guys. And, you know, that, like, there is there is something to be said for that, you know? Like, um, it's like, I, it's like I started the beginnings of organization and then everyone started to build on what I had built, which is awesome. That, that, that is exactly what I wanted. Like, oh my God, like, like it is a spectacular success. Um, JPGS says detuned paper stopped being active lately. Yeah, um, yeah, he goes through like he he's he's usually on and off. I mean that doesn't necessarily mean he'll come back, but you know the whole time he's been on and off since way back in the day he was Paper Game Co. Um, like he goes in and out of activity. He'll probably be back. Um, Yak Game says. The PGC were nice people, but they weren't connected enough. How did you meet Salman, by the way? Um, Salman, like, I just met him through YouTube. He was, um, like, in the very, very early days of this channel, 
Um, I was like looking for paper game people to like see if I could see if I could like find people with similar interests so I could like you know promote my channel I think like I found like one of Salmon's early paper game videos and I just commented on it like oh hey nice art or something like that and um and just from that one comment, he like clicked on my channel and he starts watching all my videos and like commenting on all of them. He's like, oh my God, wow, this is so good. Oh my God, this art is amazing. And I'm like thinking, wait, my art, amazing? <laughs> like, I, I was not used to hearing that. Um, and as he's going around, like he watched like all of Pokemon Stop. He's, he's like watching every video, commenting on, on, on all the ones. And it was, it was so cool. Um, <laughs> So he was, he was like the first real, like, at least the first vocal follower of this channel that I'm, that I'm aware of. Um, yeah, it says, yeah, I remember Paper Game Co. Yeah, yeah. What sucks is that every time he like goes inactive, he like deletes or privates all his videos and then comes back, but doesn't bring back any of the old videos. It's, uh, it, it, it's unfortunate. Like, because then, because a lot of that stuff is really cool, and, you know, a lot of it is lost. Um, his art is really good. He probably did again if he's inactive, <laughs> I would guess. Let's see. Uh, let, well, uh, I don't know. Let me see if I can, uh... Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can check out his channel. Um, yeah, because I loved finding these communities. I know, I know, it's so cool. It made me feel so included. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> totally. Like you're 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 contributing some really cool stuff to the community. Def definitely included. JPGS says he's active on Discord when he loved my Spider-Man X art. V2 paper is nice. Okay, let's see. D tunes paper. Forty-eight subscribers. Huh. Okay, so he has playlists, but not videos. But if you view full playlist for Detuned World, the videos still exist. Hey there, guys. What's going on? Yeah, they still exist. So all the videos he made as Detuned. So I guess he just unlisted the videos, but didn't but didn't delete them. That's cool. So at least they're still accessible. Um, but who knows if that's forever? Um, Oh, Salmon was. Oh, okay. JPGS. Um. All right, you guys. So, does anyone have any uh, any last minute things for me to talk about or react to? Um, otherwise, I guess I'll end the stream soon. Ooh. React to Spider-Man X. Oh, that's true. You came out with a Spider-Man X. Let's um, let's check that out. Spider-Man um, X episode one. Dang it. Spider-Man X, episode one. And this is what it looks like in color. Fisk Tower? I wonder what's going on. spider Sense going nuts. Ruh -roh. Oh my god. Kingpin! Wait. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so art really good. Um, I'm, I'm like, the colors are nice. Um... And it looks very, it looks very right. It looks very Marvel. It looks very Spider-Man. Um, and 
This right over here, <laughs> Venom Kingpin. Um, uh, JPGS. For some reason, when I when I first saw this, um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. JPGS. Um, Kingpin is actually the fat guy. Yeah, I was gonna ask, is he the fat guy? Because <laughs> that's what I thought when I saw that. There was a conversation about that before, wasn't there? I feel like there was. Um, yeah, but that that is that is super cool. <laughs> so wait, it's Venom slash Kingpin slash the fat guy. Awesome. <laughs> that is that is a nice uh, that is a nice merging of a whole bunch of characters. So I take it this takes place in an alternate universe where like that's like a sort of hybrid PCG Marvel universe kind of thing where like. PCG characters can also be Marvel characters or is it that like I don't know the fat guy was teleported into the Marvel universe and became the new Kingpin after Kingpin died or something and got infected with Venom <laughs> I don't know I'm trying to make up stories JPGS says Earth X is that a thing wait I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that real fast I could just ask you but no Google it's Google time Earth X X Marvel. Earth X is a 1999 comic book series published by um uh, da, 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 da. Earth X is one of a number of planets in, implanted with a gestating celestial egg after about 10 years of the end of the heroic age Black Bolt releases the mutagenic pterogen mists into Earth's atmosphere, seeking to transform humanity into inhuman so people would not suffer persecution. Interesting. So so it's an alternate planet, I guess? Okay, now let me see what you guys are saying about that. Um, Yak says, I love your spinoffs, JPGS. Yeah, it's awesome. JPGS says it's an alternative universe. Sweet. So that is uh, super cool. So, um, so in this comic, JPGS, are you gonna see more uh, PCG characters as Marvel characters, or is it just the fat guy? All right. Well, all right, you guys. I guess it is just about time to end the stream. Yes, Zuvac is Doc Ock. Maybe. Oh, yes, of course. Zuvac is Doc Ock. How can I forget? This was a conversation. Um, if if you want, I would like to see some more scrolling through the wiki, but only if you wanna. Um, all right, yeah, I'll do, I'll do a little. Um, let's see. Let me open this up so I can see chat while I'm doing that. Hold on. Lower the volume so I don't hear myself talk. Um, wait, wait, what am I doing? Wait, oh, that's what I want to say. Wait. JPGS says, I, I just want to know who is just in the PCG universe in the PCG wiki. Yeah, it can be hard to tell. Um... I really should like create like a, a badge I can put on articles that are in the main PCG universe and like maybe badges for other universes as well. But um, there is like if you look up um, if you look up like multiverse on the PCG wiki, there's a list of universes and each universe has a list of like games that take place in it um like netherworld netherworld is only perceptual boundaries 
Saluna. So oh, yeah, like actually right here. First, like it has the first appearance of that. So that's the best you can do for right now. But like most things, like most character articles, like if you don't know for sure, um, like by default they're in the PCG universe. So for example, like um, Ginkus. Whoops, I typed in Ginkus's Odyssey instead of just Ginkus. All right, there's Ginkus. Um, yeah, Ginkus is, this is the PCG universe version. And then at the top over here, there's a thing that says other versions. And then this is like links to alternate universe versions of Ginkus. Not every character has this other version section. But, I mean, it, it's mainly the big characters, but like you can make one for any character on the wiki. Um... Like over here, Ginkgo. Ginkgo is the uh, Pokemon universe version of Ginkus. And um, Sloth. This is sort of like the version of Ginkus from um, from the Soul Symphony series, like the like Genesis and Exile, which you guys have never... Um, Yak says, can I give a quick overview of Ginkus's gift? Sure. Um... Ginkus's gift. So Ginkus's gift is a PCG by Chris. Here's the intro. I'll put it on because it's fancy uh, while I talk. Um, so Ginkus's gift is it, it's a PCG in Chris's series. Me like this is when all of his PCGs starred Zach the character. Um, <laughs> And, like, in this game, Zack is teleported. In, like, this game takes place right after, like, the universe has been torn apart and reassembled. Like, this is basically when the multiverse was created, right before this game. The previous game was... Here, I'll show you. The Fabric of Reality. So, in The Fabric of Reality... Um, I'm not sure if The Fabric of Reality is on the PCG shop. It might be. Um, but in any event, um, the fabric of reality is when the, the multiverse was created because the universe was torn apart because there, there had been too much time travel over the years in all of my various adventures. And then it reformed, but now there were, it formed into other universes as well. So there was, but during this whole process, I was teleported into all different times and places and eventually into other universes. So Ginkus's gift, like, is right after the fabric of reality, and it's a full alternate universe. Um, <laughs> Yak says it's insane that this universe is almost as extensive as the MCU. I know. Sometimes I can't believe like how much PCG lore there is. I'm like, wait, how can there be that much? <laughs> There's like four of us, and not not all of us do this all the time. Like, it's insane. <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, so Ginkus's gift it takes place in this sort of fantasy universe. I get teleported there. Here's me. And but like I'm not teleported in my own body. I go like my consciousness goes into the consciousness of the version like into the body of the Zack that is native to this universe. So, it's like suddenly I'm like living his life. Um, and here I am as Zack the warrior in this medieval fantasy kind of setting. And there's various uh, people in the pub over here. Here is the village from Ginkus's Gift. Um, and, you know, which I had to explore. And the farmer was here. The farmer was a classic character from the original, original PCGs from Series 1. Let me put on some background music, by the way. Oh, well, wrong thing. There we go. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Farmer was a character from the original, original Series 1. I had first met him on a time travel adventure. I went back in time. I met this farmer guy, and I brought him back to the present day with me. So this is like a medieval farmer who's been brought to the present day. But now, um, in Ginkus' gift, and this is the last time we've seen him, he decided to stay... Um, in this fantasy land and settle down here rather than coming back to the normal universe. 
So for now, at least, that's sort of the ending of his story. He just settles down in in uh, this the medieval universe of Genghis' gift. And then over here, we've got um, we've got the weird wizard's hut. And in so, like uh, Yak says, how is this game made? So this was made back in the early 2000s when Flash animations were a thing. They were super popular, and like now they're basically dead. But at the time, it was huge. Flash animations, little Flash games that let you, you know, click things. Chris actually like tried to learn Flash, and he made this. It it isn't really like a computer game. Like it sort of is because like you could you could click like on a door, and then you go into the next room. But most of the gameplay was still like a PCG. Like you had to say like, hey, um, I'll try doing this. And he tells you if it works. And then if it does, then you get to click on the door, you know, for to go to the next room, for example. And yeah, I know it's, it's really beautiful. He did a good job. But um, he like um, a lot of this is just sort of like clip art from the Internet. And he drew on top of it. So like this hut area, I believe, is drawn by Chris. But the stuff in the background, like the hills and the trees, that's that's like from the original internet art. Obviously, put Zach on top of it as well. Um, this guy, he was like a guardian guarding the gates. I had to like, I had to like, trick him into letting me pass. And at the end, he was gonna become my ally. Unfortunately, like Chris announced a sequel to this game, but it never happened. Um. JPGS says I can make a Google slide PCG. Ooh, that's a really good idea, JPGS. That's awesome. Um, yeah, the Great Pyramid and this, you like... Oh, yeah, by the way, so the, the goal of this game, like, the reason this is called Ginkus's Gift... Ginkus is my character, in case you guys don't know. He is, like, you know, where Zuvak is Chris's most iconic character, Tutorial Bot is Kurt's most iconic character... Ginkus is probably my most uh, iconic character, except for maybe Balzac Globetron, but that's a, that's another story for another day. Anyway, this is sort of the first time Chris, you know, used one of my characters. Up to this, like, and that sort of made me feel like I have legitimacy. You know, when I first started making PCGs, I was sort of like imitating Chris, and yeah, I tried new things and whatever, but it was like. Like, my, my goal was for my games to be set in the same universe as his games, but crossovers only happened one way. You know, like, his characters appeared in my games, but never the other way. This is the first time that one of my characters ended up in his games. And the character was Ginkus, um, so he called it Ginkus's Gift. And the goal of this game is to... Um, the goal of this game is to save Ginkus because he's been captured. He's inside this pyramid. By the way, um, Murari says, where is Nishanth? I don't know. Who's Nishanth? Anyway, so, uh, yeah, this is written in runes. For those of you who don't know, runes are like the, the alphabet that English was once written in. Like, before we adopted our current alphabet, we used the runic alphabet, and... The, the, those letters were used a lot like they were to inscribe tombstones and to in, like to put inscriptions on the side of temples and for that reason like some of the letters have like a mystical significance to a lot of people and um, to this day people still carry around these runes like as if they're you know like they, they're like mystical talismans or something but at the time it was just those were just letters you know um, like, the, but yeah, I, like I was curious about them just because I got into languages and linguistics so much. So I learned how to read them. So like these runes over here, it says this thing of all things, uh, mirror, uh, uh, mirrors, something like that. Uh, birds. Bursts, trees, full... It's been a while, you guys. Uh, JPGS says, when you're done with the videos you're making, you could finish playing Swamp Survival or play The Legend of Zelda on the PCG float. Yeah, really good idea, JPGS. Like, the thing is about playing Zelda on the PCG float, I was supposed to play that with the Sonic Activist, and um, I want to, but... 
he sort of went inactive. He had to take a break for a while. I don't know if he's ever coming back. So, like, like yeah, I would want to wait till he comes back so that I can play with him. But it like Sonic Activist, if you're watching this, like, you know, let me know. I'm I'm down to play anytime. Um, as for Swamp Survival, yeah, I should definitely, I should definitely finish that. That's a good idea. So yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, we we have some weird time travel puzzles here. Here's my dog Scooby. He's like hanging out with a sheep, playing, playing a fellow. Don't be bored. Play a game. Um, got the fat guy over here, but he's in medieval armor. Um, some weird time, uh, pu time puzzle. You have to travel back and forward through time to beat that. This game had like midi, like it had battle scenes. It had fight scenes. Um, so that's why there's a grid and there's like zombies in the actual game. You could like click and drag these characters to a different box, and then like you had to like roll die, uh, roll dice to uh, to uh, deal damage, and you could cast spells and everything. It was pretty cool, kind of like D and D a little bit. Like it, you're playing a PCG, but then there's like every now and then it stops for like a D and D battle scene. It's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, so at the end of the game I never quite rescued Ginkus so we don't find out what happens because after this the next game was the Nazi machine which has which is um, which has nothing to do with this uh, Yak says my games feel so small knowing that they're a part of something this huge yeah yeah isn't it isn't it cool like like you're you're adding to this whole universe that, that that's what that's what that's what I loved about it too I, I totally know what you mean um you're, you're adding to it, and they're so small, but at the same time, you can do such big things to it, you know? Like, you can take it in new directions. You can add to it. You can... You can... And, like, when, when you add things to it, it can change that thing forever, you know? If you if you add things that make the, the mythology of it, like, that grow it in good ways that are interesting. Um... JPGS says it's cool that point and clicks are kind of like an RPG style kind of yeah point and clicks like PCGs are basically based on point and clicks um, you should check out my video on Indiana Jones and the fate of Atlantis that talks about one of the point and click games that inspired the original paper computer games um, Yak says but at the same time it's so intimidating <laughs> that's true it can be it can be but you know, just like, just like, make it your own. Like, Yak, like, you in particular, like, um, well, I shouldn't say you in particular, because everyone, this is true, but your, your PCG, like, um, the, like, uh, what was it called? Um, the, the complete guide to secret agent save game and more, something like that. Um, I hope you'll remember me when you're famous because I can tell your channel has huge potential. Wow, thanks so much, dude. I, I will definitely remember you. What, well, hold on. Here's the thing, right? If I become famous because of this channel, like, it won't be apart from you guys. Like, it'll be the community that becomes famous and... Yeah, that's my goal. Like, if, if if I'm going up, I'm bringing you guys up with me. We're all, like, we're all in this together. This is all one big community. And no matter how big this gets, no matter how famous this ever gets, which, I mean, might not get any more famous than it is right now. But if it does, like, you guys are all still going to be part of it. This is all, you, you are going to, like, what you're doing now is still going to be part of this universe. It always will be. And, um, and yeah, games, yeah, the game, what, what you added already is starting to build on the PCG lore, and that is so cool. And, um, like, it's, yeah, it, like, in my mind, it, 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 it is every much a part, every bit as much a part of the PCG universe as any of these games I'm showing you from the past. Um, uh, let's see. Hey, Earth Quen, how's it going? 
Yak says, no, I haven't made any videos. JPGS says, Yak, you should if you want to be pretty cool. Yak says, I don't know if I will. Yeah, it would be cool if you do. I mean, but I mean, if you don't want to, that's cool too. Like, you know, whatever you want to do, whatever feel, whatever you feel comfortable with. But even if you don't, you know, like making PCGs, playing PCGs, like you're still adding to this whole thing regardless. So like just being here in the community is helping build this universe. Like, like you said, it's already really big, but it can get so much bigger. There's so much more that can be done with it. It's endless. And like, yeah, like, like, um, that's the thing. Like, you know, when I first started making PCGs, like at first it was just like, oh, I'm just like imitating what Chris does. I'm not really adding anything. But then, you know, the, like the more I did it, like, cause like this game, um, am I still like, yeah. Oh, like, uh, let me switch to this. Did that change it? Yeah, here we go. This game, the Evil League of Evilness. Um, JPGS says PCG TikTok. <laughs> um, there is not a PCG TikTok. I, like, I don't know what I would do with them. There also, didn't TikTok just, like, get banned or something? Didn't, like, didn't, like, um, didn't, like, Trump, like, sign an executive order, like, banning it or something? I don't know. In any event, like, uh, <laughs> and Starry says, excuse me, I'm sorry, but we don't do that here. TikTok? Um, Yak says it hasn't been banned yet. Okay. Yeah, so, but, like, what would I do on a PCG TikTok? Um, like, I mean, like, isn't TikTok, like, you make videos of yourself lip syncing like, lip syncing to stuff jpgs says microsoft bought it oh okay and sorry says please no pcg tiktok <laughs> um <laughs> yeah says pcg tiktok would be cool uh oh the first division in the pcg community between the pro the pro tiktokers and the anti tiktokers of the pcg universe <laughs> um, like, what would you do? Like, I guess you could make, like, Zuvac lip, syn lip syncing to a song or something. I mean, <laughs> it's not impossible. No reason I couldn't just post that on YouTube, though. Um, please, God, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, um,. But yeah, going back to what I was saying a minute ago, um, um, like when I first started making PCGs, like I sort of thought of myself as just like sort of like an imitation of Chris's games. Like this game, like my first real PCG, this is the the Evil League of Evilness. Um, <laughs> and Starry says, imagine dancing in front of a piece of paper. No, it is too cringe. I don't know, dude. Like, I'm pretty cringe. I can... <laughs> Um, no, I don't know. Um, anyway. Yeah, so, like, this PCG, the Evil League of Evil Evilness, like, my first one with, like, the bad art and everything, like, like, a lot of this is just sort of, like, like, it was sort of supposed to be just, like, another random game in Chris's series, or, or like, in, like, another random one of Chris's games or whatever, because, like, here's Zuvac, even though I drew him wrong, but whatever. Like, it has a maze screen behind my house. That happened in one of Chris's PCGs. It's very common in Chris's PCGs for you to have, like, an airplane that you have to get up into it. And then inside the airplane, you have to get past a series of obstacles. This is all, like, ex like almost exactly like the flight screen. There's always a... F like, in Chris's games, there's always, like, this sequence. There's always, like... I mean, I guess this is a PCG tradition overall, but, like... Like, this, there's nothing special or like different about this a maze screen followed by like an airplane and then a flight screen and here here's our like flight screen where you have to duck in and out of the clouds and shoot these guys this is like basically the same as chris's games and then a crash landing cinematic and then just more guys a fat guy puzzle that's classic pcg like chris pcg in fact i think i like it's like the actual solution might be the same yeah, and so, like, 
originally I was basically just like a total like my first two games were basically just like copying tropes from Chris's games just because I wanted to show another friend like hey here's what my friend and I used to do so I like took some of the some of the best tropes from the old games to show the to show them like you know what PCGs are like and then um wait um uh, and sorry says I love how the sitting person is low key levitating the sitting person wait wait like this guy Wait, but he's not sitting, he's standing. Wait. Oh, uh. Alright, guess must be that guy. Anyway, so, like, yeah. Um, like, like... No, on the paper game you were showing off. Oh! Oh, duh. Um, Earthquan says, is it Sunday for you? Yes, it is. Um, sitting guys low-key have... Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Look at that. <laughs> that butt is not on that chair. <laughs> um, <laughs> I see what you mean. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so, um... My first few games were basically, like, just imitating some of the greatest hits of Chris's games. But then, like... Like, I was having so much fun making them, and then I'm like, ooh, like, I could keep making a series of these. And, like, in each one, like, like in every now and then, I could make a game that, like, totally departs from this usual, this normal PCG world and goes to another planet and sees what's going on over there or something. I'm like, whoa, I could go to totally different places in the PCG universe, explore so much other stuff. So I made, like, The Last of the Zarelta, which is, like, let me, let me show you guys on the PCG wiki, um... Yeah, like, the last of the Zarelta, which is the first appearance of Ginkus, and from there I just started, like, fleshing out my entire, my entire corner of, the, of that universe. It's still connected to Chris's original games. There's still, like, it's still set in the same universe, but, you know, I branched out into weirder and weirder, or, like, more and more different, different settings and, like, sort of made it my own, and... Like, at first, I didn't feel real. Like, I didn't feel like my games were really canon to the PCG universe. It felt like I was sort of imitating. But, yeah, eventually, like, it gained recognition because Chris put Ginkus in his game. And I was like, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, it's like, imagine that you were writing fan fiction, say, for Zelda, right? And then one day, a character from your fan fiction appears in Zelda. Well, I guess that's a little bit different because then... Because then you could sue them <laughs> or something. But this is a different situation. Um, Yak says, yo, imagine spawning a whole community. Yeah, I mean, isn't that what we're doing? Um, and Starry says, imagine there being separate timelines. Yeah. Yeah. There uh, there should be. Like, I feel I feel like there should be more of that. Um, Irfkan says, I'm from the Caribbean. That's why I asked. Oh, okay, cool. Um... We're in the Caribbean, Irfquan. Also, um... So, um... And Starry, like, imagine there being separate timelines. Yeah, like, I would love to see, like... You know, like, one time, like, I beat one of Kurt's PCGs. And, um... And, like... Then he had another friend play that PCG, but that friend made totally different choices from me. He beat it a different way. But see, like, the thing is that when I had beaten that PCG, like, Kurt hadn't drawn, like, all the screens. Like, I would find a way out of, a, of like, the, of the prison ship, for example, and then he would draw new screens based on what choices I had made. So, like, if I had escaped one direction, he drew screens for what was over there. And, I, like, I eventually beat the game, like, going through, like, that way. But when this this other friend, like, made different choices, um, Kurt's like, oh, well, I'm going to make different screens for you because you wouldn't have ended up on the same screens. You would have ended up in this different place. So I'm going to have to make whole new screens. And that's awesome. Like, like I wish that had spawned a whole spin-off line 
think about it, I mean, PCGs with its own universe and continuity based on a separate timeline. So there's like two timelines of events. One where the character beat the game one way, one where he beat the game like in a totally different way, went in a totally different direction, encountered different characters, and that sort of thing. That would be awesome. Um, so anyway, yeah, sorry I'm meandering so much, going all over the place. So yeah, PCG Wiki. What else is going on in the PCG Wiki? Random page. Fast Strikes is like a story mode. Well, like all of the all PCGs have a story mode. Like we're, we're, well, I, sh I shouldn't say all, but lots of PCGs are very story oriented. But I'm just saying, like, you know, in like in some PCGs, you can go, you know, like in one direction, and like, um, here, let me. In some PCGs, you can go in one direction, but then what if another player beats the game a different way and goes in a different direction and discovers different things? You know, now these are two different timelines, you know, with different endings. Yeah, Yak says the rants make it worthwhile. Fun says Barbados, where Rihanna comes from. Nice. Awesome, man. PCGs are taking over the world. We have... We have you know, PCG, like people in the PCG community in India, in the UK, in Barbados, just all over the place. So cool. Um, that is awesome. Yeah. I think we, we have someone in Germany as well. The only place we don't really have, well, I shouldn't say the only place, but the weird omission is Latin America. Well, I guess it's not really that weird because like Latin America speaks Spanish and, um, and like, they don't speak English for the most part. Yak says, but you already know the U.S. is where it's at. <laughs> True. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the U.S. Um, U.S. Is, U.S. has got a lot of, like, the vast majority of PCG makers, I think. But, you know, I mean, ideally, the whole planet should have PCGs. Like, like must conquer the world ha 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 I'm like I'm an, I'm an evil supervillain in case you didn't know like that, that's my alternate identity I'm the true supervillain of the PCG universe not really though um, you can search it up if you're uncertain no yeah I, I'm I, I am definitely aware of Barbados but I will search it up anyway just cuz just cuz I can Barbados. Uh, where's Google Maps? Oh, top sites in Barbados. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. Lovely beaches. Maps. There we go. Check it out. There's Barbados. Right off the coast of South America. Nice. Um... Zach casually geeking out about being a PCG super villain. Totally. JPGS, have you ever played GTA 5? I don't think so. Um, I've played some of the the GTA games, like, but I never owned them because, like, growing up, I only ever had Nintendo systems. So I, I, I played uh, some of the GTA games when I was at friends' houses, and they were really fun. Like, I never did any of the missions or anything. I just had fun, like driving around, building up stars, you know, shooting everyone, running people over, you know. Um, and then, yeah, that's just what I... Because, like, if you're at a friend's house, that's, you know, what you have time to do, you know, is, is just, is just, like, drive around, explore, go on a rampage, steal vehicles. Um, yeah, because I love that we can go from talking about PCGs on Google to going on Google Maps looking at Barbados. That's how you know Zach's chill. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Um, JPG says, what about Pokemon? My favorite is Heart Gold and Pokemon Emerald. So, yeah. Um, Pokemon, like, I have not played Heart Gold and Emerald. I do like Pokemon. I'm, I'm, um, I, so here's my story, right? This, I'm going to show my age right now. You guys ready for it? Um... I played Pokemon 
the original Pokemon, red and blue, when it first came out. It was the big fad, it was huge, and I was there, and I played it, I owned it, I beat it, I, I traded with my friends, because that was the thing we had. We had Game Boys, we had Game Boy Link cables, we would battle each other. I always lost, every time, but it was okay, it was fun anyway. Um, and I, I, I used to I used to play the game, I used to, I used to watch the... JPG says, did you get Mew? Yes, I did. Wait, did I? Maybe I didn't. I don't know. That might have been the only one I didn't get. I thought I got, like, all 150. No, there was 151. But... I forget. I forget. It's hard to remember. With the Mew glitch? No, I didn't get the Mew glitch. I did have Missing No, though. I did have Missing No. Missing No is my favorite Pokemon of all time. No Pokemon will ever de dethrone Missing No. Um, like, <laughs> he, he was definitely my favorite. Um, and that is why he's in my PCG Pokemon Stop. Um, so, like, yeah, um, that was my only Pokemon, like, I don't know why I never got the sequel, I never played the next generation of Pokemon games. I did, like, I, I did watch the anime back in the day, I think I had, I had a Pokemon comic, which was basically just an adaptation of the anime. Fast Strike says, do you know the trainer fly glitch? No, I don't. Um, yeah, but like, I like the anime. We played, I played the card game a little bit with my friends. Um, then, then I got out of it. I forget why. I don't remember. Like, it's not that I didn't like it or anything. Like, I remember when the new game was coming out, we were all excited for it. And then somehow none of us just ever got it. Like, I guess we got more into other things like Zelda, like Starcraft. Um, stuff like, oh, hey, Angry KP, how's it going? Yo. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Pokemon is still cool. Um, I remember I saw the first movie in theaters. Uh, that was that was epic. I remember that was really good um, at the time. Did Lavender C Town creep you out? Not really. Like, 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 I dug the creepy vibe, but it wasn't, like, creepy, creepy. Like... Places in Zelda Ocarina of Time creeped me out more, like the Rededs and everything, like the the bottom of the well, that creeped me out. Lavender Town didn't really, didn't really, <laughs> Lavender Town Syndrome. Um, so yeah, it's been a little weird, like when, when I got back into um, Pokemon, like when I was making um, Pokemon Stop, the, the PCG, um, like my experience is mostly from the very first Pokemon game. I played a little bit of Pokemon Stadium as well. I played Pokemon Snap on N64. But, like... Yeah, so, like... I w missed out on all these other generations. I didn't know any of the Pokemon. I researched a few of them. Like, the, the, the main thing I wanted to... There's a glitch where you can find a buried alive trainer in Pokemon Red. Vast Strike says, I think that's a creepypasta. Totally gotta be a creepypasta. Um, like... I doubt they would put that something like that in a Nintendo game um, or a sort of Nintendo game. Um, by the way, speaking of creepypasta, does anybody here like read creepypasta? I never did, but um, but I would be curious if someday somebody makes a PCG creepypasta. Unless uh, Anne Story thinks that's glitch too. All right, so that's oh. <laughs> I can't talk. Um, thinks that uh, that's cringe too um yeah it says creepypasta isn't my thing um yeah well binod i don't know what that is that's scary as f yeah um well if any of you are into creepypasta i challenge you to write a pcg creepypasta i would be curious to see what that would look how can you make zuvac terrifying you know how can you make I guess it doesn't have to be Zuvac. <laughs> it can be... I mean, there are legitimately creepy characters in PC, in the PCG universe, but, you know, um... Whatever. JPG says I'm in, more into Marvel and anime. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big creepypasta person either. It's just... It's just... I like different views of what can be done with PCGs, you know? Which is cool that since, like, JPGS, since you're into Marvel, like, I like comics a lot. I'm a, I'm a big comic person, but I'm more DC. Even though I do like, like, Marvel is cool, don't get me wrong. Like, 
Spider-Man is one of the characters I like. Uh, but, like, I watch all the Marvel movies. The, like, the Marvel movies are all cool. I've seen some of the animated series, but I just haven't grown up, like, on the Marvel comics as much. Um, so that's that's why it's cool that somebody in the PCG community is sort of introducing Marvel into PCGs more than, like, better than I could. Like you, uh, JPGS. Um, Fast Strike says it would be cool to have a Marvel PCG. Yeah, totally. Um, so, like... KP says, cool, JPGs, by nod. I like type of series, cartoons, characters. Yeah. Irv Kwan says, DC gang. Yeah, DC. Woo. If you just says, anyone have a favorite anime? I like Pokemon and Naruto. You know, I don't like, I don't watch that much anime. I just never got into it. Like, okay. I, like, if you show me a good anime, I will get into it probably. And I will watch the whole thing and enjoy it. But I don't, like, specifically seek out anime, like, as a genre. I get into them individually, right? And so it's basically whenever uh, someone shows me an anime. Um, my ex-girlfriend, like, introduced me to a Full Metal Alchemist. And um, I, I watched the whole thing. Like, especially since we had a deal at the time where, where uh, for every episode of the anime I watch she watches an episode of a show I like because we were trying to get each other into things. And, um, yeah, I watched the whole thing and it was, it was fun. But then later everyone, like everyone I tell about this, they're like, Oh, full metal alchemist is not the best anime. There's way better animes. And I'm like, Oh man. <laughs> but, um, I thought it was cool. Um, let's see. One piece hits hard. Haven't seen it. My hero academia. Haven't seen it. He said Naruto. <laughs> um, Binod Yak says, oh yeah, Full Metal Alchemist is good. Yeah. Angry KP says, Zach, OP? Yeah, yeah, OP. Er, I'm an OP supervillain. You guys, you guys found out my true nature today. Um, so, uh, what about Dragon Ball? Yeah, Dragon Ball, um... Dragon Ball, I never got got into as well. I had a friend who tried to show it to me, but they showed me a random episode, and I didn't really get into it. I have a friend now who's super into it, but um, in fact, it's Via. It's Via is super into Dragon Ball, and uh, she won't like wants to tell me about it. But so far, she hasn't really shown me any episodes. If she does, I'm totally open to it. I mean, I know like because I'm a big Superman fan. There's all these like. You know who would win in a fight, Superman or Goku? You know that's 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 the whole thing. Obviously, there's like a death battle over it. It's the eternal debate. You know, Captain Kirk versus Captain Picard, Superman versus Goku. You know, like eternally, uh, Pokemon versus Digimon. You know that sort of thing. Star Trek versus Star Wars. You know, um, and like just for that reason. It's like, err, you know, like, I, I, like because I'm such a big Superman fan, I'm like, err, I'm Team Superman. But you know, that's not a reason not to not to check out like Dragon Ball. I'm sure it's a perfectly good series. <laughs> like, like I'm sure I would enjoy it as well. Like, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Earthquan says DBZ from Young, cool. JPGS says to me, I'm more into Spider-Man, which is the best superhero in my opinion. Yeah, Spider-Man is really cool. Like, I enjoy... Sp I mean, like... He's not my favorite hero, but, like... Of the non-X-Men Marvel heroes, he's probably my favorite, or one of my favorites. I think he's really cool. But, like, see, the thing is, though, Spider-Man is so similar to Superman, right? I mean, like, the red and blue outfit, he's a reporter, and, like, he has, like, a grumpy, like, editor at his, at his newspaper... He deals with, like, super scientific villains. Like, dude, like, he, they both have super strength. In fact, like, when, like, I mean, you can, yeah, Spider-Man can't fly or anything like that. But, like, dude, like, when Superman first appeared back in the 1930s, he could only leap. He couldn't fly. So he was sort of that more, like, you know, physical, bouncy, kinetic character like Spider-Man is. So, yeah, um, like... Spider-Man is a lot like Superman in a lot of ways. Not in all the ways, but... Um, yeah, so that makes him a really good hero to me. Um, like, 
Not that I don't. Not that I don't like characters who are unlike Superman. I do. I do. I like. I like a lot of different kinds of superheroes. Superheroes are awesome in general, but and I like seeing different kinds of superheroes. But the fact that Spider-Man is so similar to Superman like gives him that extra boost to me. And I, I like the physicality of him, like swinging from buildings. You know, that is super cool. Um, Yak says my faves are Wolverine and Captain America. Um, yeah. So, so X-Men I think is really cool. X-Men in general, like. I don't know if Wol- like Wolverine isn't necessarily my favorite, but I like him. You know, like so with Wolverine, there's sort of like a um like there's there's two camps, right? There's people who think that Wolverine is hands down the best superhero that ever existed, and there's people who think Wolverine is just way overrated and the least interesting of the X-Men and you know stuff like that. I'm kind of in the middle, like the fact, like, I'm, like, I don't think he's the best guy ever created to me, but, you know, I still enjoy him, you know, like, I, like, I don't, like, um, like, just, like, I'm, like, I don't like a character less just because he's so popular, um, I, I see why he's popular, I, like, he's not my favorite character, but I like the X-Men in general, I like all of them, I like their, the, the interestingness of their personalities clashing, Logan is one of them. He's he's a very uh, interesting character, and yeah, so I think he's cool. Um, Bass Strike says I think Iron Man is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, Iron Man is cool. I really liked uh, the the Iron Man movies. Uh, sorry to see what happened to him in a uh, in a uh, in a uh, End Game <laughs> because of his suit ups. JPG says fun fact: Did you know that Deadpool killed the entire Marvel universe in an alternate universe? Oh yeah, of course in an alt. In an alternate universe, dude, like anything happens, everything happens in some alternate universe somewhere. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, that's still cool. <laughs> that's still really cool that that he did that. But like, I mean, in alternate universes, like the most ridiculous, like just judging from DC mostly, but you know, in comic book universes in general, in an alternate, un- like, there's an alternate universe where like Superman destroyed the whole Earth, you know. There's an alternate universe where where Batman injected himself with Doomsday Serum, turned into Doomsday, killed Superman, and then killed the entire universe. So tech, or the, the the entire planet Earth. So technically, uh, Batman has has done what uh, what uh, Deadpool did as well. Um, uh, that, Yak says that's ironic. A supervillain into superheroes. Ah. Ah, that's true. That is true. So you, you've you've caught the contradiction. <laughs> um, Wolverine feels so grounded as a character. He's relatable in a way. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, but like, I guess there's different kinds of relatable. You know, there's different ways of being relate. Like every superhero, I guess, relates to a different part of human experience you know um for me superman even though like everyone says like oh he's so overpowered i can't relate to him to me he's super relatable not because of how powerful he is but because you know he's he's sort of like an ordinary shy awkward guy you know he's he's like a guy who gets a job as a reporter he's shy he's awkward and he he can't show his true self to everyone around him and you know i think that is very relatable as well wolverine is a different kind of relatable it's sort of like it's the relatable of like how i guess being estranged from everyone you know like being like being tough being alone being like living for so long and like not being able to be like i guess he can be part of the normal world but you know, like, I think all the mutants in the X-Men, in one way or the other, or another, are estranged from the regular human world. Wolverine in particular, because, like, because he's so long-lived, um, but also because, you know, because of his particular history. Um, JPGS says, who thinks console wars are getting old? It was only good when Sega, Nintendo, and PlayStation won. Uh, yeah, let, let, let's have all the consoles merge into one, one mega console, and all the games would be on that. That would be more convenient than you could just get more games. Um, 
Or, or like, I mean, at this point, you could just have everything on PC, and then, and then just like get a controller, a plug-in controller for your PC or something. I don't know. Um, Fast Strike says, do you think eventually there will be a PS10? Um, probably. I mean, well, look, look, they promised it, right? Or at least they promised PS9. I don't know about 10, but definitely, um, definitely. Like, have you guys seen this? Uh, let's uh, let's get back into this version. Um, have you guys seen the PS9 commercial from way back in the day when PS2 came out? Let's see. Um. Uh, here we go. PS9. New for 2078. PlayStation 9's new electronic spores tap straight into your adrenal gland. PS9 has improved retinal scanning. A mind control system. Holographic movie surround vision. And telepathic personal music. The ultimate just got better. PlayStation 9. Teleport yours today. Yeah, like, like, I I always thought that was hilarious. like, dude, you know, this came out right when this was an ad for the PS2. And I'm like, you know, that doesn't make me want a PS2. That makes me want a PS9. <laughs> like, dang it, you know? But, uh, you know, I guess we'll have to wait until 2079 when, like, when the, f the consoles of the future, like, fly up your nose in order for you to play, like, ultra VR video games <laughs> um yak says like wait jpgs says top three spider-man um like wait my top three spider-man was like spider-man movies or what i guess i'll do movies because that's what i know um i don't know i guess the first spider-man movie with toby Maguire, like that was super awesome like the current series of spider-man movies is really cool and obviously, uh, Spider-Man um, Into the Spider-Verse. Really good. Really, really good movie. Um, let's see. Um, Yak says, versions of Superman are cool, but the newer movies I don't like. Yeah, so... I mean, okay. So personally, like, I'm I'm su I'm such a big Superman fan that like I'll I'll watch anything Superman and enjoy it. I have mixed feelings about the current Superman movies. Um, I, I I better stop, or else I'm gonna get into one of my Superman rants. But like, I have a whole rant, I have a whole theory about why Superman, um, like why they keep getting Superman wrong. Like, and I, I like. I think this is something that they just never pick up on. Um, but anyway, I better not get into that. <laughs> Let's see. Yak says, Mega Console doesn't seem like a financially good decision for the parties involved. Well, I just have to think through that. Okay, so if you have a mega console, okay, so there's one console and everyone makes their games for that. That's good for the people making the games because now their game has a bigger audience, right? I mean, if I'm making a game for the Nintendo Switch, now that game is going to be available to everyone who bought any kind of a console if, you know, there's only one big mega console. So it's good for people making games. It's obviously not good for people making consoles because, you know, only one person can sell consoles. Um... But, you know, if they made some sort of a deal with each other to consolidate their consoles into one big thing and they all make money off of it, that could be good for them. The bad news is, like, it could be bad for us, the, the fans, because, like, even though it's convenient to have all your games on one system, 
if the, if the systems don't have to compete with each other anymore, then they don't have as much incentive to make their system better and better, you know, to compete with each other. They could they could just like, eh, chill. Every now and then we'll release the next edition of the ultimate system, you know. Won't really change much. Maybe like add a few extra bells and whistles, but, you know, don't worry about it, you know. Um JPGS says Squirtle is my favorite. Yeah, Squirtle's cool. And Starry says rant, 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 rant. Oh man. Um Earthquan says mine's is luxury. Yak says, I would love to see a video on your Superman theory. The point of our economy is competition. Mega console defeats the purpose. Yeah, yeah, that's that's basically what I was just saying. Um Um, so, well, Anstar is saying I should just rant. Yak is saying I should make a video on my Superman theory. Which should I do? Should I do both? I mean, I guess I could rant about it quickly here and make it... But, like, see, the thing is, if I made a video on my Superman theory, I wouldn't put it on my PCG channel. I'd put it on my main channel. Like, not my main... I say my main channel, even though PCGs has, like, 300 more subscribers than it. But, like, my, my other channel, my Zach channel. Um, JPGS has, says Andrew Garfield had so much potential as Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, the first movie was good. I never For some reason, I never got around to seeing the second Andrew Garfield movie. I still want to. Um, but, yeah, like... Um, Yeah, like, like I want to make more, like, rants about comic book stuff or, or, like, video game stuff or, you know, whatever on my main channel. I've been meaning to do that. But it's hard. But, like, first of all, it's hard to do that since the PCG channel takes up so much time. And secondly, like, like it's a lot of effort just, you know, and not as many people are going to see it. You know, it's like, so it's hard to motivate myself. Like, my regular PCG channel has 24 subscribers. So, like, no one's going to, no one's going to see it. Like, but I also don't want to put, like, random comic book stuff on my PCG channel, so I don't know. I don't know. Um. Anyway, should I rant about the Superman thing right now? What do you guys think? Let's take a vote. <laughs> and Starry says, yes, rant, rant. Yak says, rant. Okay. Okay, right. This might be like I don't know I don't know how how um m like how much you guys care about Superman one way or another. But like rant about Sonic? All right, I'll do that after. Um um but Superman um I think everyone is getting like something wrong about Superman every like all the like I love the com the Superman comics I love the Superman shows I love the you know cartoons everything you know it's all great however I think they're getting one huge thing like they're mi they're missing an opportunity sort of you know see here's the thing right like Batman like I'm gonna put on some some background music um like Batman right um batman like there was a period in the 60s where batman was unpopular he was uncool you know batman comics were actually doing really bad in like the 60s and 70s like there was a period where they almost got canceled legitimately like batman was dc's least popular character and they were like Man, what are we going to do? And they kept, like, all that was sustaining them was they kept, like, every issue, they would put, like, weird, like, they would try to add new members of the Bat Family, you know, like, like, Bat Family. Let's see if I can Google it. Am I on five? Let me, let me, uh, switch. Yeah, I am. Okay, good. Um, Bat Family Silver Age. Yeah, like, all the time they were just introducing all these weird Batman concepts. They didn't know what to do with it. You know, the Batmite and, you know, Batwoman. Like, 
before the current version of Batwoman that is, like, actually somewhat popular, um, like, they were just introducing all sorts of weird concepts, but they didn't really know wh what to do with Batman. But then, you know, sudden, like, there was some point, like, in the late 70s, early 80s-ish, probably, around that time, that, like, it just clicked. They figured out what they were supposed to be doing with Batman, and they made him dark, and they made him, like... You know, like, they got to the core of the character. Batman wasn't supposed to be these, like, silly, happy adventures. Batman is sort of like... This is the 80s Batman. Frank Miller, dark, brooding, you know, like, not so, not so cheerful, you know, like, that... Th and this version of Batman has influenced pretty much every Batman to this day, right? Because they figured out what it was that makes Batman popular. And when they did that, like like flipping a switch, it went from, you know, Batman being their least popular character to being their most popular character. Today, Batman is unquestionably DC's most popular character. He is, like, he outsells even Superman, who used to be the most popular character back in the, like, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and even 80s, probably. Like he outsells Superman by a lot. Like, the, DC just can't stop greenlighting new Batman comics, right? He is so popular. Because they figured out what it is about the character that works. I feel like we haven't gotten to that yet with Superman. Um, so, here is what I feel that they're missing about Superman. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be, at once it's gonna seem really obvious and and really, um, and really, um, JPGS says another thing why they didn't like him because they killed, kind of killed Robin, I think. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I don't know if that played into how much, the, how popular Batman was overall. I know there was a backlash. I know there was a backlash. The weird thing is, they had a vote. They had fans vote on whether to kill off Robin because Robin, that version of Robin was unpopular. So, it, but yeah, there was definitely a backlash when Robin was killed off. So, so yeah, you're right about that. Um, yeah. So, um, anyway, here's here's my theory about why why they haven't figured out what to do with Superman. Now, like. What is the defining character of Superman? What the defining characteristic of Superman, right? I would I would argue. I mean, okay, most people a lot of people would say that the defining characteristic of Superman is that, you know, he's a good guy, he's noble, that he's inspiring, that he's whatever else. And that is all true. That is all true. You know, he's all he is very noble, he is very inspiring, but I would argue that is not what people come to Superman for. People come to Superman because he's powerful, and powerful is cool, right? <laughs> now, that may seem obvious, and that also may seem, like, totally wrong and, like, oversimplistic at the same time, you know? But I think, like, Superman's power, like, how powerful he is, has actually gone down. Like, even though, like, Superman is technically more powerful than he was in the 30s, Fast Strike says, so you mean overload him with muscles? Not muscles. Like, because, like, the classic Superman, like, back in the day, did not have a lot of muscles. This is Christopher Reeve's Superman, the classic Superman. He did not have a lot of muscles. He wasn't super muscly, but he was still strong enough to, live, to lift a mountain over his head. It, he was, he, like, he sort of, it made him all the more badass because he was... He didn't, he didn't have to look, you know, strong to be, like, he, he just had so much, I don't know. Anyway, um, like, if you're a super, like, maybe Superman's not your thing, but if he is your thing, like, I think you like to see Superman lifting ships over his head, you know, you like to see him pulling planets out of their orbits, like, here's, uh, Superman pulling planets. See, this is cool. This is cool. Like, Superman pulling a chain, pulling... He says, by moving these worlds from their own dying galaxy to new suns at the other side of the universe, I'm saving countless billions of lives. Like, 
I think it's cool a guy that can dre that has that amount of power. And now, you know, the 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 common argument is, um, well, that's boring though. Like, if he's so powerful, what can stop him? How can you put a challenge for him? Here's the trick to that, right? Don't. Like, the point is not to challenge Superman. That's not the fun of it. The fun is not for him to... Like, Superman is not like other heroes. He's not like Batman, who has to sneak in places, who has to fist fight people who might get hurt. He's not like, you know, James Bond. He's not like Indiana Jones. He's not like any of these... Uh... Oh, have a good one, uh, Yak. Um, anyway, no, no one's really talking about my Superman rant, so... Um, I, I guess I won't bore you guys with it. Let me, let me see what else I can respond to. Um, JPGS wants me to rant about Sonic. I don't really have a rant about Sonic. I, I unfortunately, I never like I, I I used to play the original like Sonic games in, for for Genesis. That was fun. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, every now, like I, I haven't really played many of the new games. Occasionally, I have at a friend's house. They're fun. Enjoyed them. Um, saw the Sonic movie. Um, we, we, like was amused by the controversy about it. Um, thought it was pretty fun. Um, yeah, that's that. That's my Sonic rant. That's all I got. Sorry, guys. Um. Uh, JPGS says Ben 10 could beat him with Alien X. You mean beat Superman? I haven't seen enough Ben 10 to know what that is, so I can't really compare, but I doubt it. Like, dude, Superman is very powerful. Well, depending on the version, he's very powerful. But, like, but like my, my rant about that is just, like, is this just that they make other characters his equal so that he'll have a challenge, so that he'll have... but. I think that's a mistake. You know, the people are trying to answer that criticism. They're trying to an oh, oh, I said it would stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm sorry. Um, stop with the Superman. Um, Fast Strike says, do you know about Twitch plays Pokemon? Nope. Wolfcron says, my head hurts. Oh, sorry. JPGS says, Alien X could destroy a universe and rebuild another one. And he didn't even notice. Okay. Okay. That's fair. I've never seen Superman do that. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but we haven't seen Superman do that yet. And see, that right there is the mistake of what they've been doing with Superman. They've been sleeping on letting him be as powerful as his potential allows him. Like, the most pop popular version of Superman is this guy, right? Is, is not... Like, the, the one I see on people talking about on internet forums is Superman Prime 1 million. Superman Prime 1 million has been bathing in the sun for a million years, building up power, and there's rampant speculation on the internet about what the extent of his powers are. Like, can he create new universes? Can he teleport anywhere instantaneously? We don't know. But, see, we don't know because comic writers don't want to get into that. Oh, see, yeah, here he, he says, welcome to my universe, and it's, like, kind of implied that he may have created a universe. I don't know. Or at least that's, specula that's the speculation. It's not confirmed. Um, and Starry says, I think that I could beat Superman, no problem. I don't know, and Starry, that would be, that'd be a close match. That'd be a close match. I wouldn't be sure who to put my money on. <laughs> that's a close one right there. Um, because I can believe... Well, that is true. That that, that is true. Uh, like, I believe too, Anstari. <laughs> I believe. But, yeah. Um, yeah, like, little known fact. By the way, we're talking about Marvel. Did you guys know that Superman is one of the few guys who ha has had both Thor's hammer and Captain America's shield. He, uh, well, I mean, he, one of the few people who can lift the hammer and he was using Captain America's shield at the first time during one of the DC Marvel crossovers. Pretty darn cool. 
Can 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 Ben Ten Alien X say that? <laughs> Probably not. Um, JPGS says RPCG characters versus Superman Prime One Million. Um, that's a like. Which, what are the really powerful PCG characters? All right, this is gonna be a video, you guys. This is gonna be a video. Um, well, this is okay. This is gonna be two videos. Video number one: Who are the most powerful beings in the PCG universe? Video number two: Can that most powerful being beat Superman Prime One Million? <laughs> and Starry says, "Wow, I did not know that." Yeah, I know. Isn't it cool? Um. Yeah, um, so, yeah, um, Genghis could, ooh, interesting match, interesting match, um, you know, the thing is, even I don't know what the extent of Genghis' powers are, I, like, he certainly is very powerful, and he certainly has powers that have not been revealed yet, there have, there, there's, like, I, okay, in my next PCG about Ginkus, which I've started making a little bit a while ago, we are going to reveal Ginkus' main power, his biggest power. Um, all right, have a good one, Vast Strike. See you later. Um, but yeah, we haven't we haven't revealed that yet. Vast Strike says the power of imagination, and Starry says the power of positivity. I miss those. JPGS, the perfect one. Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. The perfect one is really powerful. Also, Superman did actually fight the perfect one in one of these comics. Um, TPO versus... Wait, okay. Called it like the superheroes of Earth. And okay, we're here. It is the perfect one versus superheroes for Earth. Yeah, the perfect one. Yeah, here's the perfect one fighting all of the superheroes. You see the full size image. Come on, come on, internet. Okay, Green Lantern shoots the perfect one. Ah, but it bounces back. He gets zapped. Yeah, oh, Superman. Yeah, here's Green Lantern in the background falling over. Superman screams. The perfect one fires anti-reality reinforced Krypton bombs. Ignominity. Superman moans and falls. And then at the end of this... Even Ginkus fights the perfect one. And, uh, yeah. So the perfect one is very powerful. So I guess here... There you have it, folks. I guess that's proof that the perfect one could beat Superman. <laughs> or at least he did this time. But you never know for sure. Um, and the Flash flies at the perfect one at C squared. Not just C. C is the speed of light. C squared. C squared is the speed of light times the speed of light, which, if you didn't know, is very fast. So, um, it, in fact, it's faster than is physically possible. So that's really fast, but not fast enough, I guess. JPGS says, how many volumes are there in the TPO Comics series? There are, I believe, let me see, four, yeah. They're all here on the PCG wiki. Um, I should put them on the PCG shop, but I haven't yet. But in the meantime, you can re definitely read them here on the PCG wiki. Just It's just under the Perfect One comic series. We've got volume one, two, three, and four. Um, volume one is like how he turns from the fat guy into the perfect one to begin with. And then, like, ultimately, at the, like, you know, how, his rise and fall, essentially. Volume 2 is his return, and things get a lot weirder. Volume 3, like, is the one where... We, we were just reading 3. That's the one where the superheroes fight him. 
Um, in volume four, so far there's only one issue in volume four, and it like it takes place many like centuries after the other volumes, and um, and it's about a post-apocalyptic Earth, but the perfect one ha is coming back, or whatever. So yeah, that's how many there are. All right, you guys. I'm starting to think it's um, just about that time to end the stream. Thank you guys for hanging out this whole time. This was fun as always, and I'm, I'm digging these streams. I'm gonna try and do more streams because because they're awesome. And uh, yeah, um, the original purpose of the stream was for the PCG roundabout, so you guys should check that out. Um, I just I made a game at the beginning of this stream f for the roundabout. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the Cold Brooding Werewolf, we'll play it. So thanks for watching.